Hi, my name is Rob Matson. I'm an environmental scientist with the St. John's River Water Management District, and I'm going to show you this display here at the River Center, which shows a cypress swamp along the St. John's River. Cypress swamps are a type of, of wetland habitat on the river, and what's a habitat? What's that? I can't hear you. Louder. That's right. A habitat is a home where plants and animals live. And one of the main ways we define wetland habitats are by the types of plants that we find growing there. In the case of cypress swamps, the main plant we find are the cypress trees, like you see behind me here. That's a cypress tree. They can get very old, hundreds or even over a thousand years old. They're one of the very few trees that can grow in very soggy dirt, uh, in, in wetland conditions, and really thrive in those kind of conditions. And one of the things that helps them do that is their root system. And one of the, the parts of that are these things called cypress knees that you see here growing out of the, uh, the dirt here. They're part of the cypress tree's root system, and they might do different kinds of things. They may help get air down into the roots in the soggy soil. They may also help strengthen the root system. Another plant that we see in cypress swamps and, and other wetland habitats like marshes are the cattails. And those are these things here that look kind of like a grass, okay? Um, they have their leaves and these are their seed heads. The Native Americans, like the Seminole Indians and the Timucua, made lots of different uses of cattails. They would take the leaves and make hats and baskets with them. They would eat the roots and the seed heads. They could dip them in, in kerosene or rosin and use them as a, as a torch, like a candle at night to provide light. Wetland habitats are also very important homes for a lot of different kinds of animals. Amphibians like frogs and salamanders, reptiles like turtles and snakes, and birds and mammals. And we'll look at some of those here in this display. Amphibians include frogs, and one frog that you'll see is the green tree frog here that we see on the trunk of the cypress tree. You may also see green tree frogs around your home, uh, on your window, or on the siding of your house. We also get reptiles like different kinds of, uh, of, of snakes and turtles. Now you've talked about the gopher tortoise, which is one kind of turtle, but we don't get those in cypress swamps because they like upland areas. But one turtle that we do sometimes find in cypress swamps is this guy here, which is a snapping turtle. And so that's one of our aquatic or water turtles that we find in cypress swamps. We also get uh, different kinds of birds, many kinds of birds in our wetland habitats. One of the main birds that we see in cypress swamps is up here. That's a wood duck. In this case, that's the male or the drake wood duck. It's one of the prettiest ducks in North America because of all the different colors. And the other thing I'd like to show you, one of the other groups of animals in cypress swamps are the mammals. So let's go over here and look at one of those mammals. So one of the other groups of animals that we find in wetland habitats are the mammals. And one of the main kinds of mammals that we see is the river otter, which we see right here, this guy. Um, their river otters are, are very, very good swimmers. Uh, they feed on crayfish and clams and even small fish if they can catch them. What we've learned over the past few decades, uh, scientists like me, is that wetlands are very important for people. They help clean the water, they help store floodwaters, and again, they're important homes, habitat, for many kinds of, of animals. And so those are our wonderful wetlands. Hi, I'm Sam Carr, volunteer here at the St. John's River Center. And this section of the River Center is called Palatka Then and Now. And we're going to start by looking at an 1884 map of Palatka. And this is the map that's called a bird's eye view of Palatka. And do you see a bridge that you ride over? No, you don't, because there wasn't a bridge in Palatka then. The bridge would have been right around here now. 
is the way it is. What do you see in this picture? See the river boats? That's what built Palatka. And also back here are orange orchards and so forth. And then the, the real town started right over here and went all the way around the point that, uh, that we know as Palatka today. Main Street in Palatka is a railroad track right through the middle of Palatka. And so if you go to Main Street today, you'll know that was the main railroad track running into Palatka. In 1884, after this map was made, a giant fire came to Palatka and burned most of the town all the way to Main Street. And that's what, uh, it was a significant event here in Palatka. So this is the bird's eye view map of Palatka in 1884. Okay, so we've talked about Palatka using our map. We talked a lot about what happened here in Palatka and everything. So since this is school, there's going to be a test. Okay, is everybody ready for the test? All right, here we go. The first question is, the original native name of Palatka meant cow crossing. Is that true or false? All those that say true, raise your hand. All those that say false, raise your hand. Let's see. Trues have it. All right, all right. Good, good job. Good job. Okay, remember us talking about the, the, uh, the, the uh, map and uh, about the big fire that happened in Palatka? Remember that? So, in 1884, a huge fire burned down Palatka's entire downtown business district. Is that true? Raise your hand. Is it false? Raise your hand. Let's see. I think the trues have it. The trues have it. The fire happened in 1884, right? And remember what we saw on the, uh, on the map of the, of the uh, things coming up and down the river. So the question is, north of Palatka, the St. John's River becomes too shallow for boats and cannot use for navigation. How did they get here if it's too shallow? Is that true? Raise your hand. Is it false? Raise your hand. Ooh, looks like it's 50-50. Let's see. True is... Ah. So the river boats were able to get to Palatka up and down the river. It was plenty deep enough. This is where it got shallow, and therefore that's why, how Palatka got started, is with well, that riverboat traffic up and down the St. John's River. This section of the St. John's River tells us how a river built a town. And we have these displays here that, that show us different parts of the St. John's River and, and uh, how, how uh, and, and the different elements from out from uh, mastodons all the way up to current times and so forth. So this, the Palatka that we know today was built as a river town and, and the, the primary reason that people first started coming here was tourism. And it was to visit the St. John's River and to fish and to canoe and those kind of things. But the main attraction was our paddle boats and our river boats. These were steam powered river boats and they were three stories high and they were built very narrow and they had a very unique characteristic and it was this internal paddle wheel that you see here. And that internal paddle wheel was necessary because the Ocklawaha River is so narrow. And in order to get up the, uh, the Ocklawaha River, they had to have an internal paddle wheel which made it very unique and, um, and, and became a unique part of Palatka's heritage. The industries that also spurned on Palatka were the um, turpentine industry, the timbering industry, particularly the cypress, and, uh, and the orange orchards that, that, uh, that were all over Palatka. And as you saw in the map that I showed you earlier, the Palatka was completely surrounded by orange groves. But the St. John's River built this town of Palatka, and now you know the rest of the story. My name is Dick France. I uh, am a volunteer here at Waterworks uh, Environmental Education Center. And one of my specific interests here are the tortoises that we have uh, on the property. 
and I'd like to share some information about those tortoises with you. First of all, William Bartram is the first person to report uh, these tortoises on his trek between the lower store and uh, Paints Prairie. He found them in what is now Eastern Al uh, Alachua County. And he describes them. He presents the first descriptions of these animals uh, to the outside world. Anyway, the gopher tortoise here uh, is uh, a very unique beast. Uh, it uh, is a turtle. We call them tortoises because the ones that live close on, on dry land tend to be called tortoises. The, uh, uh, this tortoise is f um, very unique in many ways. It's a vegetarian. It eats plants. It does not eat animals. And it is a reptile. And reptiles have uh, a backbone. And like other vertebrates, like us, so we're all sort of related to, to one another. The uh, uh, tortoise, the gopher tortoise, this is the shell of a dead one. By the way, the tortoises cannot get out of their shell. They are in the shell forever. And in fact, the shell is part of their skeleton. Anyway, this is a, a, the skeleton of a, a gopher tortoise. And you'll notice that it's just not one solid bone. It's actually made up of a bunch of different bones. Gopher tortoises eat plants. They're vegetarians. Uh, and they have some other neat qualities about them. One is that they have these massive front legs, which they use for digging burrows. And a burrow is a tunnel in the soil. And they live in those tunnels. That tunnel may be 15 or 20 feet long. There's just one tunnel, one entrance in, and the same entrance out. They're not multiple entrances. And they do it by digging with those front legs, which are very shovel-like. Uh, gopher tortoises um, are, were at one point, one point very rare. In fact, we thought they were going to become extinct. But thanks to the Game Commission and other organizations, the tortoise continues to survive. And in fact, uh, Bartram's words, which are here on the, on the sign, William Bartram on his trek across North Florida in the spring of 1774 was the first naturalist to describe the great land tortoise. So this, this, this animal has a history, it has a Bartram history, and it's amazing. Okay, and like other turtles, it lays eggs. These live on land and they live in a very peculiar kind of habitat. And we'll take a closer look at that habitat in a, in a few minutes. Uh, they lay eggs. The eggs are, bur uh, are dug into, bur into the apron. And I'll show you what the apron is. Um, and uh, uh, it takes them three months to hatch. It's a very long incubation time. All right, we're going to go over uh, shortly and take a look at the tortoise pen and, and at a tortoise burrow. And hopefully, uh, maybe one of the tortoises have come up and will say hello. Maybe it'll be Shelly, maybe it would be Sandy. There's Polly and Sticky. They're all females and they all live here together. This is uh, one of our uh, gopher tortoise females. We have four females in this enclosure and the enclosure uh, is fenced in so the tortoises can't get away. By law we cannot uh, take them anyplace else. They are protected here only. This is a female. She's sitting at the mouth of her burrow and the, the sand in front of her is part of the apron and the apron is the dirt that she's pushed out. She's like a bulldozer. Like she pushed out of the burrow as she was digging. And it's that apron where they often lay their eggs and they will dig, the females will dig a pit and they'll put in anywhere from one to seven eggs. They're big hard shelled eggs. They look like chicken eggs except they're round rather than, uh, and the shell is hard. And it takes them 
anywhere from 90 to 110 days to hatch. Our little friend here has moved out of her burrow and has come up onto the apron. And you can see the background it, where, he, where she was uh, just a few minutes ago. That burrow is, can be more than 15 feet long. It is the home for uh, not only the tortoise, but there are probably 300 species of other kinds of animals, mostly insects and arthropods that live uh, in the burrow. There are some, things, some, anim some animals that found no other place but in that burrow. The Florida mouse, the gopher tortoise, the uh, uh, gopher frog, and the gopher crickets. The reason that it's called a keystone, the tortoise is called a keystone species, because that burrow provides homes for all those animals. And remember, that burrow uh, protects these animals. Uh, there are many things that can happen to the tortoise and other animals when they're out on the surface. Uh, this habitat, which is called sandhill habitat, burns often. And these burrows protect both the tortoise and all those other creatures when there are fires. And they also protect, uh, the, the burrow protects these animals from predators. Uh, and also another little, <laughs> she's fed up with this, she's gonna head back down. Um, but anyway, the, uh, uh, this habitat is very peculiar. It's almost like a Florida desert. And so it helps these animals, including the tortoise, uh, to maintain water balance or uh, uh, keeps them from dehydrating.